Hey, welcome back to UASL. Today is day number four, and we're moving into match number six between XT and ZGT, that is Extraterrestrial Gaming, and Zerg Gosu Team. And uh, we have Star Station as the map, and the Protoss versus uh, Zerg, which is pretty interesting. Uh, so we'll have to see how this game plays out. Right now, ZGT is at two games, while XT is at three games, and it is a best of seven. So this could be the final game in the series, or it could be moving into the ace match. It's a very tense game for both teams. And in the bottom left-hand corner, spawning in as the blue Protoss, it is Primal Moon. I've seen him play a few times, generally on bigger maps. He played a pretty aggressive air style of Protoss versus Zerg last time I saw. Let's we'll see if that's what he's going to be doing this game. And up in the top right-hand position, playing for Team ZGT. I have not seen him play. Uh, he is their claim leader, I think, though. Or at least he's their coordinator, as he tells us who's going to be playing and stuff like that. It is Mosca, as the red Zerg, who appears to be using a Terran icon. Let's see what a properly Protoss-looking icon down here for Primal Moon. So good on him. The channel's lagging. Mm, yeah, there's a little bit of a hiccup there in the game. All right, so let's see. Overlord heading across the map, nothing too crazy. And it's nice that it's actually like the latter versions of this map, because before, in the middle of the season last time, we started out with the latter version of Star Station, but it wasn't forced cross spawn until partway through. And then we had to keep using the old one because it's what had to make the season fair, essentially. All games being played out throughout it. So this season, it's nice we can use the regular version of Star Station that is actually Force Cross Spawn and everybody's familiar with and nothing's too crazy. Though, I will say I liked non-Force Cross Spawn. I feel like if every game's macro, it's a little boring. But we shall see. We can definitely... Had a really exciting macro game last time I saw him play. It was on Red City, I believe, so it was a pretty big map, too. So, pretty excited to see what uh, Muska throws out here. This expansion's nearly done. It's getting there, cruising along. And nothing really too exciting going on at this point. Cybernetics Core coming along, then we'll see what tech sets to go down. I would imagine there's going to be an expansion here pretty soon out of our Protoss player, but. Yeah, looks like the probe's positioning to do so. 400 minerals, there it goes. Expansion down. Probably Mothership Core here. Yep, there's Mothership Core. All right, cool. So all very standard play out of our Protest player. And are also pretty standard. Queens are cruising along. Look at that creep spread spreading after the first injects when the third queen comes out. So nothing crazy. Overlord's in pretty good positions. This one's actually going to get in and get down here, which is really great because then he's going to be able to throw it into the into the back part of the base where a lot of the time the tech is hidden down here behind the minerals on this map. So a lot of protests do that. So that's a good position to have your Overlord. We have a few links coming across the map. And uh, I don't really think they're going to do that much damage, but they are probably going to force a Photon Overcharge, which is always nice. Sentry may be able to wall them out, though. Yep, going to just go ahead and get forced away. So nothing really too crazy there. Had enough to finish that wall in with uh, some gateways. So nicely played there by Primal Moon. Third's going to be going down for Muska since he knows that that natural is now going up. That would have to be pretty crazy not to be going up. And uh, there's the Stargate. Like I said, he did play played pretty aggressive, uh, but pretty fun to watch Stargate tech. Uh, last time I saw him in PVZ. And I mean, it's Star Station. You kind of have to go air in Star Station. It's just logically. <laughs> uh, but, but really, it, it has a lot of area around the map for flying ships around. So it, it does make sense, uh, not just based on the name. And injects going down. Third queen looks like she's on the way. At the third. Okay, yeah. Oh, that. 
Okay. He never built a third queen. That's weird. So no creep spread right now out of Mosca. Uh, generally, we are going to be going for like the slower play with uh, like no link speed and stuff. You're generally going to want that third queen pretty fast just so you can start spreading out to your third base. Especially on Star Station because it's very oddly placed. It's like down and around the corner. And you really got to be able to pull your hydras back up into your main base, back and forth, leave some on the low ground, some on the high ground if there's type of air aggression. And uh, we have an overlord being thrown over the mineral line. It's not really going to see a lot of tech. It's going to see that there's a phoenix, so that's pretty good use for it. And he's going to throw it in at the natural as well. And he's going to see, okay, yeah, there's no tech being hidden on the south side of the map. And I don't really think there's been very much indication that a robo is actually down. Let's see. Yeah, no, he doesn't know that a robo is down, which is a very, very much an advantageous situation for our protest player because that means he can start building immortals, which would be pretty legit right now for him since there's going to be some uh, roach laying aggression, it looks like, coming up. There's not very many roaches to be moving out across the map with. It's going to force a lot of uh, sentry energy out. But there's really not anything but sentries out on the field right now. So uh, Phoenixes are going to try and pick off this lone queen. But it's only three of them, which means they can't kill it in one lift, which means there's going to have to be another one. Is it going to lift it again? There it goes. Okay. Second lift goes down. There's the fourth. Sarah is late, guys, and it made us use another lift. My B. Picking off one overlord, second one tried to get focused against, but there's another fat one hanging over it. And the big aggression comes down right here. Moon's wall is getting tested, and first force fruit goes down right as the pylon does. First few lings are getting in. Not a lot left back here to defend. Some force fields going down, but there's a lot of roaches already kind of inside the wall. And uh, no photon overcharge has actually been dropped on this nexus, which would have helped clean this up a lot faster. First immortal is out on the field, though, and... Uh, it should be cleaning this up, but it is right now shooting lings. Okay. Roach is getting in here, dealing a decent amount of damage. And uh, all in all, not the worst exchange for our Zerg player. He's now up about 20 supply, though that's pretty standard at this point in the game. In about 10 minutes, it's not really that much to, to be crazed about. But more immortals coming out in the field. Colossus range is being researched. But now our Zerg player knows, like, okay, well, he's building immortals, so I guess I'm going to do a giant wave of roaches, which doesn't really make sense to me. But here's a big wave of roaches, and he has a Stargate, so he could be going into some type of Void Ray play. We'll have to see. You know, that's what the, the Zerg player's thinking at this point. But, uh, and see, there are the Hydras, because he knows that there's those Phoenix moving around the map being harassy. And he knows that no other Phoenix have come out, which means the Stargate is either A, sitting idle, uh, or B, it's producing Void Rays. And if it's producing Void Rays and he doesn't have Hydras ready, it can be pretty brutal with a few Phoenixes and like two Void Rays, actually. Lift up that Queen and get to town. And again, there's no creep spread in between these bases. That's what I was talking about. Later in the game, this really starts to come into play. Look how slow everything is moving across the map. Like, the Roaches don't have speed yet, obviously. Uh, the Hydras, I don't think, have speed. I don't think that just has speed. Let's look at the upgrades tab. Uh, no, I don't see him. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you know, they're cruising across just slowly, kind of humping it. And we have a few Phoenixes just continuously. They actually have a lot of kills between them. They have about 18 kills so far between them. Now we have some very good time warps going out on the field. The force fields uh, kind of made it so it funneled in there. And this is a pretty big aggressive play out of our Zerg player right now. If he engages this really well, there's not a lot of force field energy left. There's like two. Uh, he could maybe crush this army. But uh, our Terran player, our, sorry, our protest player is trying to position himself. He loses a Colossus. The last few force fields are thrown down. Immortals trying to go to town. A lot of their shots are being used on uh, the last remaining Hydralis, and he does barely hold this and clean it up. And now the supply is very even between the two sides, which means the Protoss is dramatically ahead. Anytime the Protoss is tied up on supply, they're very, very far ahead. He also has his third up. 
Uh, there's kind of a timing for Zerg players, which is what he was trying to aim for here, where you can kind of smash the Protoss third as they get it up on this map. It's pretty brutal. Um, the Colossus is kind of the defensive mechanism to that because they can chill on the high ground right behind the mineral line, but it's uh, it's pretty hard to hold your third, so very nice job here done by Primal Moon. And I think a lot of it is, is you know, it has to be chalked up to these Phoenixes. They have something like 20 kills-ish between all of them now, and Overlords, Drones, and uh, Queens, so they've gotten a lot of damage. Uh, fourth base going up for Mosca now. Still not a single creep tumor out on this map. Not even one. These queens have multiple injects worth of energy. There's just no creep tumors at all right now. Phoenix is starting to get chased back across the field, though. And we have more Colossus, and now the first Void Rays are starting to get built and mixed in here for Primal Moon. That big, nasty Protoss death ball. A few Colossus, a few Void Rays. Two or three Immortals. Wow, that Immortal has 12 kills. How much does the other one have? Where are you at, other Immortal? There you are. 10. 22 kills between those two Immortals. Pretty brutal, actually. Alright, Zerg player just kind of uh, scooching around over here by his watchtower. Trying to keep these Phoenix away. It's tickling them with spines. Though, based on the StarCraft cinematics, those do not tickle. Those are very, very painful. But uh, in-game, they make tickling-like sound effects. So, uh, And now we have these Phoenix just still patrolling the middle of the map, just trying to see if any type of aggression is going to be coming across where they can retreat, and then he can position his army in a good position, good concave, things like that. Colossus lasers land some melt on a Zergling that was scouting over that way. And a few lings look like they kind of wanted to engage that zealot, but instead use some phoenix energy. Voidra count still growing. Now he's producing uh, two at a time. Uh, two at a time along with a colossus. Not really building that much more behind it. Looks like he's preparing to go into either Archons or Storm or a combination thereof. As the High Templar Archive just finished, we have Corruptors coming out on the field here for our Zerg player. Our Zerg is also at 1-1 one, one upgrades compared to the uh, only 1-1 one, one actually. Oh, it's, I thought that was level 3. Still getting used to the new Forge icons. That's level 2 is green. Uh, upgrades there for our Protoss player. And getting level one air weapons as well. Starting up his fourth base. Our turn. Or I'm sorry. Our protest player is in a very, very good position right now. Uh, our Zerg is going to want to engage at some point to try and smash his fourth before cannons and more defense get up. But it's a pretty rough proposition. Okay, there are the creep tumors. Creep tumors everywhere. We've decided it is time for creeping. Five creep tumors go out, leaping across starting from the base at 17 minutes. Corruptor's trying to scout out the location of this army. They're like, oh, okay, there you are. And I'm going to lose two Corruptors. All right. Zerg had the high ground advantage, but there's not really a great concave with that high ground. Uh, there's just really not enough space. The third kind of walls it in pretty good there. And it looks like he's thought about trying to push into the natural. But maybe he's just trying to pull him out of position. All right, he's separating his army out. Now he's going for a big concave. Corruptor's trying to swoop in. Big time warps going down. Roaches engaging on the Zealots. That's good for the Roaches. Uh, but all of the Hydra just getting melted so fast by all these Colossus. Now there's no anti-air really left. And these Void Rays with their overcharge are just going to clean everything up very, very hard. And our Protoss player has jumped ahead once again in supply of the Zerg pretty dramatically. In the meantime, his fourth just finished up. He's transferring some probes over there. The fourth of our Zerg player is up, but there's not really a big transfer over there. He has been behind on worker count for a little while now. And uh, another big wave of roaches popping out. Our Zerg player looks like he has maybe enough money to remax on roaches, but we'll have to see what he's going to be moving into. He is still at 1-1. One, one. He didn't wait for his 2-1 to finish to make that engagement. While the Protoss players uh, plus 2 damage finished partway into that engagement, which is very, very helpful to make a pretty distinctive win out of that one. Roaches seem like they want to do a lot, but I don't really think they're going to be able to engage this army. The Void Rays are, have overcharge back up. They're going to melt through the roaches who are totally defenseless 12 more corruptors being built right now 
So maxing, finishing maxing out on just Corruptor Roach. Primal Moon trying to move in and snipe the whatever would be the fourth or maybe the fifth base, but it's not even there. Zerg Mosca is now all the way across the map as these zealots are charging the most ridiculous amount of distance you've ever seen to engage on this hatchery, which looks like it's not going to be able to be saved. Yeah, it, it does go down. And uh, that's a pretty big hit for him. He doesn't really have any macro hatches or anything like that, so that's a pretty big hit not only on his economy, but also his larva production. Which, I mean, you look at it and you're like, oh, okay, well, he's at 200, 200 supply, Lokazi. Well, yeah, but he's going to have to remax after this. And if he doesn't have a macro hatch and the sharp, crisp injections that uh, are keeping him up macro wise, after this fight, it's going to be very hard for him to remax. And Storm is almost done here for our Protoss player. Also plus three weapons, which are a lovely shade of blue. All right, Roach is trying to stomp forward, getting a decent exchange there, trying to kill off a few High Templars. Uh, they start morphing into Archons. Roach is stomping forward. They are now working down the Colossus, but there's a lot of Void Rays. GG called for Mosca. Again, he can't remax after that. He knew it was done after that push. He just wanted to see what it could get done. And XT takes this series 4-2. A lot of really great games tonight. I'll probably go back and cast some from replays and stuff like that as the first few games are on an alternative stream. Big shout out to the SCV Rush stream for picking up uh, me in a Skype call and letting me stream through that. I'm sure everyone appreciates that greatly. Teams, players, everybody involved, all the viewers. So thank you very much. Big shout out to them. Make sure to tune into their stuff. It looks like they do stuff on uh, Mondays, Wednesdays uh, at about 8 p.m. EST. So I'm sure that'll be going up in their chat as well. Uh, they threw me a shout out link uh, in chat. Big thank you there. And thanks for tuning in for NSL, guys. It's on every Saturday and Monday night at 8 uh, 30 p.m. EST, so make sure to tune in for those. And this is a Kazakh for you. Make sure to follow me on my social media, and we will catch you guys next week.